Hey, hey, welcome to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am the host, Kristen Ostrander, and today we have a very special guest, a return guest, who is a profitability and Amazon inventory management expert, also the co-founder and CEO of SoStock.com. Please welcome Chelsea Cohen to the show. Chelsea, welcome back to the Amazon Files. I'm so glad you're here with us. Yeah, me too. Thanks for having me. For sure. So I know that you are an expert and you've been digging in deep this past year or so talking about profitability and how we can become more profitable. And this is a topic everyone needs to lean in on, right? Because yeah. Amazon, if we know anything about them, they're always changing. They're changing their fees. They're changing their rules. They're changing their capacities. They're all the, the different things. So I'd love yeah. to just have you talk a little bit about that. And first of all, um, just let everybody know um, your, who you are and where, what company you're from, and then we'll get into it. Sure. Yeah. My name is Chelsea Cohen. I am the co-founder and CEO of SoStock. It's an inventory management software that uh, I created really to focus on profitability. Inventory is very much tied to profit. And, you know, I was, I was stocking out, I was overstocking, and I couldn't find anything out there that would really help me with that. Uh, so that was why SoStock was created. And then last year, we were acquired by a company called Carbon Six, which is a, a collection of uh, of software tools for Amazon and e-commerce sellers, and so it's just been you know really great to work with a, a larger group who's very passionate about helping uh, sellers to to do better in uh, the Amazon space. Absolutely. And I love Carbon Six. There's so much of a suite of tools there and great, great staff and great people that are just rallying around us Amazon sellers, helping us to kind of move the needle forward. So let's yeah. talk about profitability and in the here and now. So in 2023, I know you guys recently uh, released this white paper. Tell us a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, it really was you, you bring up, you know, profitability and we're talking a lot about profitability at the end of last year we had a meeting, I had a meeting with um, Vanessa Hung and our head of marketing, Erica, and really both of us without even, you know, Vanessa and I, without even uh, consulting previous, came to the consensus that, you know, 2023 is the year of profitability. We really need to understand our numbers more than ever. And I feel like there was this progress is this uh, progression of marketing. And then everyone was focused on marketing for many years. Inventory became the thing that everyone started focusing on. And now it's profit because Amazon has changed their fee structure. They've added a lot of um, additional fees over the past few years. And actually since 2020, the fees collectively have increased about 20%. So understanding those fees was what we really wanted people to, to be able to do. And Amazon doesn't make it easy to understand those fees. Sometimes, you know, even myself reading things like the capacity manager fees, how does the bidding system work? How does the overage fees, you know, uh, calculation work is very, can, can be very confusing. So we wanted to simplify that. And we created a white paper specifically on how to simplify it and how to avoid or reduce those fees in your business. So where can everybody find that? Because you guys, I want you guys to write this down or, or you know, timestamp this podcast, whatever it is that you're doing so that you can get this white paper. We are going to kind of cover the Cliff Notes version of it in this episode, but yeah. that doesn't mean that you don't need to be familiar with it. Um, Chelsea mm -hmm. and her team has come up with this because it's it's giving you the layman's version of piecemealing all of Amazon's new policies and fees together. So thank you in advance for this mm -hmm. white paper. And I can't yeah. wait to read it, um, but also want to hear from you that like, what are the 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 top three things that we need to know about this because this affects everybody's bottom line whether you sell patio furniture or your own private label products or makeup or anything every fee is going to affect you and so we need to know if we're if we're making if we're not making money what are we doing in business you're just have an expensive yeah. hobby you don't have yeah. a business yeah. <laughs> so, um, profitability needs to be top of mind for every business owner so specifically with amazon what is the first thing that we need to be focused on for 2023 when when it comes to these new policies and numbers? Sure. I would say, you know, first and foremost, understanding you can't, you can't move forward without understanding your numbers. You can't be profitable without understanding your numbers. And most of us understand what are our upfront costs? You know, what are our upfront costs? What are our advertising costs? 
what are the fulfillment fees? But that's the place where it kind of breaks down. People don't necessarily think about the storage fees and how, and you know, you kind of can lose track of when did you put that inventory and how long has that inventory been sitting there? How much is it accumulating those fees? And every single month it's eating into your profit more and more. So that's the, I call it the, the silent profit killers, Mm. because it's those things that are kind of out of sight, out of mind. And you're wondering why your cash flow and your profit is suffering. Well, that's a big piece of of why. Now with Amazon, I mean, we all know if you've been selling for longer than three years or I I call it pre pandemic, right? Pre 2020, Mm -hmm. things were very different. And then in 2020, with all the different things that Amazon came down first, they decided half of you can't send anything in and then you can send Mm -hmm. some and now we're back to full load. But those fees that they've adjusted the fuel surcharges and things like that Mm -hmm. may have uh, trickled away in some places, but then in other places, they have significantly raised fees. So where's Mm -hmm. one place Place that we all can take note right now saying if if you sell anything oversized or you know what is one fee right now that most people aren't aware that they changed mm-hmm. um i would say aged inventory fee that's a big one there was a fee that was referred to as long-term storage and that fee has exist- existed for years and years it was that you're going to be charged an extra fee on top of and they always do do stack we call a uh, we call the white paper, refer to the white paper as um the, the Amazon fee stack because they tend to stack the fees on top of each other. It's not that you were paying a monthly fee and now you're paying an additional fee. Uh, it's that you're paying both of those fees. Mm-hmm. So there's aged inventory that came about in, I believe it was in, in 2022 and or even the tail end of 21. And that was adjusting to now it's not just a year that you're paying for inventory that's been sitting there for a year. They moved it to nine months and they had a specific fee that you paid for nine months. And then you had to pay a different fee and it's um, a fee based on cubic feet. So the bigger your product, the more you're going to pay per unit. Uh, This year they changed that. So they restructured that so that you're now paying at six months. You're paying and, and it's a an escalating fee. So at six months, you're paying 50 cents per cubic foot. And then at uh, at seven months, you're paying a dollar. And then so every 30 days it goes up a dollar and then a dollar fifty. And then it jumps even further to eight or to six dollars and eighty cents, then to four dollars. Or no, wait, sorry, to three dollars and eighty cents, then to four dollars, and then to four, four twenty, and then a year in, you're paying six uh 90 per cubic foot Mm -hmm. so you're paying increasing fees over time and when you're paying these increasing fees you have to remember that they're compounding on each each other every single month because some products you're you're paying for the for the six month fee and the seven month fee if you had in for seven months so that's where it gets to be really crazy and losing track of of that not a lot of people look at their aged inventory reports Losing track of that when you could have removed the product or you could have uh, focused on a campaign to, let's say, reduce the the price to to move it out before that six months hits. Mm. Yeah, that's insane because if you really don't pay attention to that, especially if you're selling lower dollar items, that mm-hmm. can really, really, that can cost you more than what it was worth to keep it there. You yeah. have to really pay attention to that. And I know a lot of people are scared of oversized stuff because of these types of fees, but believe mm-hmm. it or not, I've actually personally had more sell-through rates with higher ticket items for some reason mm-hmm. than some yeah. of the smaller items. So these are just things to pay attention. Amazon does not, this is is an indicator that Amazon does not want to be your storage unit. They want yeah. to move and have have inventory flowing and not just mm-hmm. sitting there and, and collecting space. So what yeah. are your thoughts about this for people who like there's there's a this is like a catch 22, right? Uh-huh. Um, I mean, in, list, in my mind, I'd love to have your thoughts on this is um, seasonal items. So uh-huh. you have this short season, but you also yeah. then have Amazon stacking on these fees for things that sit there. However, like, let's just take a Christmas tree, an artificial Christmas tree, for example. We know it's big, it's oversized, it sits there, and they generally don't sell year round. A a piecemeal Uh here or there. 
but Amazon wants, uh, if the listings are dead and not getting traction, they want them to go away or they bury them. So how yeah. are we to balance our inventory uh -huh. with seasonal, with the fees, with also these listing algorithm issues to where if we're not selling uh -huh. year round, then what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, Amazon, to some extent, uh, within their algorithm, they understand the seasonal trends. And so um, it doesn't mean that, you know, all year round, if you're if you've got a, a holiday item, it's not necessarily that that it works in the, in the same way. It's just similar to to uh, back, you know, say last year, giving you more um, more space in your storage if you've got a high season coming up because historically you've had a track re record of that. Uh, so we, you know, there are some things in the algorithm that, that come into your favor, but I would say, you know, keeping, keeping as little inventory as possible. Uh, if, if you, if it's not sitting there anyway, you know, you may not necessarily want to, um, to have a bunch of it, right? Mm -hmm. If you're gonna sell one or two here and there, you don't wanna have a bunch sitting there. One thing that you might be able to do that that could help and could especially help because your, your inventory performance index score is going to suffer when you have a, a, a stock out, yeah. right? That in-stock rate is very important within your, your IPI score. So I actually, and I actually learned this from, from Vanessa, this hack, mm -hmm you might consider instead stranding your inventory hmm. because that has a lot less bearing on your score than going out of stock. Within the algorithm, it's it it looks different. It's treated differently uh, in Amazon's algorithm. So to, to do that, you could, you know, usually it's a, a listing suspension that causes a stranded stranded inventory. Uh, so you might be able to, it depends on if you can control the images or not, you might be able to uh, create an image violation and um, that would suspend the listing. But it really, you can't, you can't strand your, your inventory unless you personally uh, get your, your own. I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking as far as if you don't control the listing. Right. I think most people listening probably do. You're not talking about arbitrage okay. or things like that. You're talking about your own bundles or your own private label or even a wholesale listing that you are you most likely own at some point. Um, Perfect. Yeah, because at that point you can you can not upload images and then you're instantly stranded until mm -hmm you can do that. So at that point, you could maybe remove an image, change an image. Like I know exactly what you're saying. Like it's yeah. manipulation in some form, but at the same time, yeah. it's not, there's nothing wrong with it. You just have to cause mm -hmm. an error that then strands yeah. your inventory, which I think we've all accidentally done that. And also uh -huh. on purpose. So yeah. that's one way I've known how to, to strand your inventory. Mm -hmm. is to yeah. is to not put an image and then they won't right. let it go live until mm -hmm. it's there. Another yeah. another thing I've noticed about seasonal stuff that I've done personally mm -hmm. is um I'll create I'll have a one FBA and then one non FBA and for seasonal stuff we'll keep stuff in stock um either by a single unit item, just keeping it there and maybe having a higher price. You know, if your Christmas tree mm -hmm. is usually $99, well, we might put it at 400, but it's a uh -huh. merchant fulfill so that uh -huh. the listing yeah. still stays live and active and purchasable, but we don't have those storage fees at Amazon mm -hmm. until it's time to convert it. So that's always yeah, a good perfect. way to kind of keep that stock out from happening. I mean, that to me is the worst. I hate going out of stock because you know yeah. the listing is going to get buried. It's going to be awful, you know, tons mm -hmm. of money to get it back going again. Yeah. Um, okay. So what are the long-term, so aged inventory fees, you guys pay attention to that. If you need to strand your inventory by removing an image or not uploading images yet so mm -hmm. that you can prevent some of those um, algorithm issues and hurting your IPI score, which then of course hurts your limits and you can't send as much stuff in and take as much real yeah. estate. Um, mm -hmm. So what yeah. about some other fees that might be um, missed by a lot of people, but it can really hit hard? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and this is more, um, if you can control, uh, I mean, in, in bundles and also in private label, if you're able to control the dimensions and the weight of your product. Mm -hmm. So, um, and more so in, in private label, because it depends on, you know, let's say you've got three shampoo bottles, it's hard to, to control that. 
But uh, if you're able to control those things, fulfillment fees, they're increasing all the time and dimensional weight, that's another thing that came about. And most people know about that and they understand that dimensional weight is um, can can really affect you. If you've got a lightweight product that's large, it's going to cost you more. Mm -hmm. You can have a pillow that costs that that is six pounds, but because of dimensional weight, meaning it's got a much larger size, it's going to take more room in this in the the warehouse. Uh, it's going to or in, also in the trucks when they ship them out, it's going to let's say something that's six bucks could be billed at 20 bucks, mm -hmm. a pillow, for example. Uh, so finding ways to reduce that. We're seeing a lot more vacuum packed things. We're seeing a lot, uh, maybe if you put your bundles in a box, maybe you can figure out how to shrink wrap it. And that's, we're doing a lot of work on that right now. We've got a, a new free tool coming out called the product resizer, which will do those calculations to figure out what your opportunities are. Are you able to reduce by weight? Are you able to reduce by size? Uh, the biggest opportunity that we're seeing when we look at these things is that your some products are just, let's say, a quarter inch off from being into the lower, lower size tier because of dimensional weight. Mm -hmm. And that's not something that people look at very often. So there's huge opportunity to reduce your your uh, your fees at at a minimum by 16 cents per unit mm -hmm. with dimensional weight adjustments. Yeah, paying attention to those sizing tiers and how like uh, li literally like one inch can make a difference. And if yeah. you're oversizing your packaging um, just slightly to where mm -hmm. if you're looking at packaging in a way that you can take an inch off of each side, that could literally save you a dollar or two more per unit if you're yeah. paying attention to that. Um, it's funny how you said shrink packed or va vacuum packed. Mm -hmm. I ordered this like really cute flower pillow for my daughter recently on Amazon and literally yeah. came in a package this big. And I'm like, this cannot mm -hmm. possibly be this pillow is supposed to be like 18 inches. And yeah. sure enough, they somehow like shrink wrapped it to the point where it's this, you cut the plastic open and it went poof, and got really big. It was like, all uh -huh. of a sudden it was this perfectly cute pillow. But at first yeah. I'm like, it kind of looked <laughs> Forgive my analogy here, but when I first looked at it, it looked like something they pulled out of a drug bust. It had like <laughs> the, some tape around it and some cellophane. Oh, wow. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is like a kilo of <laughs> <free oil." laughs> like, wow. that's kind of what yeah. it looked like. But then you, it said cut plastic here and I cut it and all of a sudden it expanded. Uh -huh. But that first, yeah, you're not, you're not selling the packaging. You know, that's one of the good things about Amazon versus retail. You're not selling the packaging. So yeah. like, I, I always think of, um, every time I put, uh, my moisturizer on my face the moisturizer is this big and it comes in a box and and yet there's this much yeah. actual product so that those are huge opportunities because on retail you want it to take up space and be very noticeable on the shelf but on amazon that doesn't really matter Exactly. And I think that's so important. And it's also important that like I'm always talking about branding, right? And branding and, and customer experience. And you can have a great customer experience with great packaging that doesn't have to be too big or too glossy or too anything. Like you said, if you've got your little moisturizer and it's literally like a one inch little, you know, cube, then you can actually put that in a really cute gift box if you wanted to and have mm -hmm. it be that kind of experience without having that retail space because our retail space yeah. is digital and that's those first images and our title that are selling things rather than the yeah. packaging. So that's Absolutely. something that you can reduce size. So that's great. So, so far we're talking about aged inventory and checking out those reports. You guys, these fees stack. That means this month it cost you a dollar and in six months it cost you twelve dollars like it mm -hmm. makes a difference yeah. if you're only making eight right you can't afford yeah. to keep having that going and then of course um reducing the size i love that tool i'm definitely intrigued by that i want to put all of my pieces of inventory in there and be like okay where can we do <laughs> reduce the size and packaging and things like that and it's about yeah. getting with your prep centers as well or your manufacturers if you're manufacturing mm -hmm. and having them ship direct fba from you know china or india or wherever you're ordering your products talk to your companies about reducing the package sizing first of all that's going to save you on shipping and importing if you're importing and it's going to also yeah. save you with with amazon fees um what 
okay so those are those two fees what is your like if you had to just tell people one thing for 2023 for Uh their amazon store what is one thing no one can live without this year in in Uh 2023 uh what no one can live without i believe um honestly the the uh the, the product resizing because it has it has huge ripple effects, especially if you have a, a, a third party logistics. If you're if you're pit stopping somewhere and you're storing your stuff off site, off Amazon, those are fees that you accumulate as well. And you're paying for everything that's done. So if your product comes in um, and it has to be put on pallets and then it has to be stored and then it has to be uh, unpalletized and every single product has to or every single carton has to have a, a label on it. You're going to pay for labeling fees. You know, we had we have carton pull fees, you know, for pulling the carton, carton labeling fees. And so when you resize your product, um, and this doesn't even have to be resizing your product, maybe you don't have that opportunity, but considering that you can adjust your, let's say your carton dimensions, uh, and adjust how that how many cartons fit on an ind- individual pallet. All of those things start adding up because if you are better optimizing your pallets and your cartons, you have less cartons that you have to pay fees on and you have less pallets that you have to pay fees on. Uh, so it has this ripple effect, you know, especially if you've got, you know, the product resize, you've got a f- yeah, fulfillment and fees are reduced, storage fees at Amazon are reduced, and storage fees and handling fees at your 3PL. So it really has this huge impact on all of those fees across the board. And it's something that no one, not no one, that that few people are taking uh, a look at because it is a lot of work to, to go through all of that. Yeah, absolutely. Paying attention to and the biggest and and the ripple effect, exactly like you said, like if something is going to happen here and it's going to reduce your fees here, it's going to reduce your fees all the way down the line. And also talking about, you know, third party fees, I've had a lot of people come to me saying that they've pulled back on using 3PLs because they they simply can't afford all of these fees anymore. And I'm like, well, what's your solution? They're like, we don't know. I'm like, you're not going to do it at your house. I mean, some people um, are still in that place where they're still packing and receiving at their own homes and things like that. And we get to a certain place and it's like just the cost of doing business. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just on a side note of this, um, how, how familiar are you with the Walmart platform? Um, Somewhat just, you know, not, not as much. Uh, We're just starting to, to talk about being able to integrate. So I will have to dive in head first in this next quarter, because uh, that's definitely on our, our roadmap coming up pretty quickly. Yeah, I, I, I love having the Walmart conversation as well, which is different places, different platforms and different software providers, because this is the next real thing, you know, after you figure out Amazon, and you get that into a well oiled machine, now it's time to add platforms. And mm-hmm. I've heard that um, the fee structure at Walmart right now is pretty um, lucrative, considering all of the different things Amazon has been doing. And mm-hmm. just wondering if um, you have future plans to integrate with with Walmart as well and mm-hmm. other 3 PLs so we can distribute yeah. more more widely yeah absolutely that's yeah we've we've been wanting to for a while and it is uh walmart is heating up and there is a uh, large opportunity over there and not a lot not as many sellers over there so people that get in early as long as the economics make sense people that get in early are going to have uh, a lot less competition than than they do on amazon have you seen people drop products and completely change their product lines with some of these new fees that they have? I mean, yeah, there are products that have been, you know, have become less profitable. Uh, the, you know, and then there are competitors who are, are dropping their fees. So they have had to either, you know, drop products that aren't profitable or they don't realize how unprofitable a product is. Um, there is a switch back to now that there's a little bit more capacity at, in Amazon storage fee, storage uh, allocation, there are people who are changing their logistics, going directly to, to FBA. Uh, so if there's a product that is just becoming less profitable, you have to become smart as, as to what are all of those fees and really laying out, you know, it sells really well, but the profit margins aren't there instead of just ditching that product 
thinking about, like I said, you know, not to, to harp on the, the, the restock or the resizing, but beyond that, going back to direct to Amazon, which is what people really backed off from in 2020 and, and on, uh, going back to Amazon and also uh, maybe storing some of your inventory at your uh, supplier if they will do that, which is, is uh, something that, that some, you know, Chinese suppliers will do storing it for free for up to three months. And you can even negotiate to only pay that final payment on what ships. So if you are, if they're holding a month or two worth of inventory, you're only paying the rest of that invoice when it actually ships out. Awesome. I think that's a great idea. And actually, there's a lot of prep centers now. I know the prep center that I use is now offering storage fees that for us makes super so much sense, really, for mm -hmm. us to say they're saying, okay, well, I mean, I want to say I, mean, I don't want to misquote their prices at some point, but I believe it's like $40 a pallet per month or something mm -hmm. or a couple of pallets. And for me, yeah. that's a lot less expensive than storing it overseas or at, or even storing it at Amazon. So I can order mm -hmm. three to six months of inventory and have them ship as needed. So I'm literally yeah. turning through, you know, a couple, you know, we ship, they ship for us every, almost every day. So yeah. when I have the prep center, I just say, hey, it's time to send, you know, two more, you know, two more pallets of this or one more pallet of that rather yeah. than um they're offering that so that's also another way to kind of reduce those fees is mm -hmm. being able to work with you know third-party uh, prep facilities that can kind of hold your inventory stateside but then yeah. it's not costing as much as it is on well amazon's compound long-term storage because sometimes yeah. when i'm ordering i mean just using the christmas tree as an example like we have to buy those now it's may you know mm -hmm. yeah and so then where do those go how they make sure that they get here on time then get into Amazon mm -hmm. eventually on time. Um, yeah. You know, we have to have a place to keep them and even still storing those types of things at a third party fulfillment centers are really helpful to uh, those that want to take advantage of some of the shipping opportunities or mm -hmm. even quantities. Like I know that there's some people that, um, you know, quantities of, of even private label items that you're ordering, you're talking, you know, five to 10,000 units you need to order. And then that mm -hmm. we're not sending all that to Amazon. So where yeah. does it go? Um, so taking advantage of all that. Um, so the, he keeps talking about it, the pro, the product resizing tool. I cannot wait yeah. to check this out because I feel like I want to run every, all my SKUs through that and be like, uh -huh. where can we reduce? If you reduce this by two inches, I'll be, the prep center is going to hate me. <laughs> I would uh -huh. be calling yeah. them like, well, I need you guys to get this box down by two inches <laughs> it's gonna yeah, save a lot yeah. of money yeah exactly you know and it is you know uh it is a it, a task in and of itself because you're redoing your entire supply chain but you know I, I refer to it as profit optimization across the supply chain we're used to trying to reduce our our advertising costs we're used to negotiating with our suppliers but that that space in between from point a to point, point b we don't really think as much about it can make a huge difference. It's a friend of mine, and actually I've talked to, this is what aggregators are doing. The smart aggregators, they'll acquire a brand and then they'll look at the, the product line and see where can we do this. So if they're doing it, it's a better idea that you do it, especially if someone is trying to exit a business because all that money that you save then compounds based on your multiple. So it's a three X multiple or a four X multiple, that's that that amount you're saving you then regain in you know three or four fold yeah for sure so especially if you are exiting or looking to sell your brand or your business um, mm -hmm. looking at all those costs and making it so advantageous you can even show them we've reduced the cost from this to this we've we've created yeah. margin and opportunity here um, yeah. another way too, believe it or not is bundling you know when you've got those those things that you're on the cusp of being like wow this profit margin is 10 percent and that's just not enough wiggle room now you have yeah. an opportunity to take that same product and bundle it with something that's very complementary and now that you could have a 20 percent margin. This is what we do on every single unit item that we have. We bundle everything yeah. because, mm -hmm. you know, some products sell really well, but there's just not enough meat on the bone for it to make sense. So we, mm -hmm. when I add the meat to the bone, <laughs> you yeah. know, but you can, you can definitely up the customer experience by adding a couple of products. And I'm not talking about, you know, like I just literally bought, I'm always buying stuff from Amazon. The truck is here literally every day. It's just, it is what it is. Um, <laughs> but as like, we just ordered something that came with literally my husband's like what is this we ordered coffee filters and it came uh -huh. with some sort of like 
tissue pack or something that had this company's <laughs> brand on it. And I'm like, oh, this is like bundle gone wrong. Like, that's not what we're talking yeah. about. That's not how we do this. <laughs> we don't yeah. just throw sticky notes or some sort of something <laughs> your brand to make, make a bundle. But yeah. the idea here is creating that value for the customer, whether it's an, an instruction sheet, maybe it's a, a uh, a how-to guide, you know, or, you know, those are like some basics, but I mean, talking about product, you know, mm -hmm. you can yeah. always put more meat on the bone by adding a product that enhances something with that. Mm -hmm. so, Chelsea, yeah. I so appreciate your time and your energy today. You're such a wealth of information. Where can everybody come and find more about you, get that white paper and learn more about So Stocked and this amazing new tool that I can't wait to try. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, go to uh, sostock.com forward slash connect. Emails there. Uh, demo of the software is there. We're coming out with a overstock fee so you can see what your li your potential liability is for your overstock fees. And if you join our email list, you'll be able to get notified when that new uh, product resizer tool comes out, which is very soon, uh, working with the, the developers every every day on that. Uh, and then as far as the, the white paper, you go to carbon6.io forward slash fee stack, you will be able to, to get access to the uh, white paper. Awesome. You guys, I highly recommend this. You're in business on Amazon. You need to know about these fees. They've made it really easy for you to read that. So please go to carbon6.io forward slash fee stack. Yes. Right? Oh, yeah, I got it the yes. first time. Okay. <laughs> and then, of course, I always repeat that because then it comes in in the notes. You guys, it's mm -hmm. in the show notes. Every single link that we said will be here and clickable. So you can reach out to Chelsea. You can reach out to Carbon6. You can get these papers. Get educated. This is how we save money in our business. We educate ourselves. We learn. We grow. We look and seek out opportunities. We are in business to make profit. So profitability should be top of mind all the time. Otherwise, you're really just running... Uh, an expensive hobby. And we don't want that. We want profitability in our business. Why? Because we have better things to do than just work all the time, right? We have real lives yeah. and like to do real life things. So with that being said, what is something that you love in your real life that's not related to work? Sure. Um, I have, I have a, it's called lettuce grow. It's a farm stand. So, uh, you know, it's this big hydroponic tower that I can grow uh, lettuce and greens and herbs and that sort of thing. I'm trying my hand at tomatoes and cucumbers right now. They're just coming up. So I really like those types of things. I have been working a lot on hobbies actually over the past year and a half because I get these questions and I would have no answers, right? I've been reading more. I've been, I, I remember the time when I really realized that I needed to get some, uh, to allow myself you know, time away from work was when I answered that my, my favorite thing was chopping, like chopping food, like preparing, like prepping. I'm really into that too. I love to be able to, to chop food for preparing for, you know, for cooking, but that's not a hobby, you know, <laughs> that's a chore. Uh, so I was like, okay, well, I, I actually need to be able to do the things that I really love and care about that I just haven't had time for, uh, just make the time to do those things and your life becomes a lot more full and you, uh, you actually enjoy your work more. Yeah. I love that you said that too, because I think that's when I really started to get a hobby as well. When someone's like, well, what do you do when you're not working? And I'm like, uh, if I'm not mm -hmm. momming or working or doing chores, I'm sleeping. That's there's no time for anything else. Yeah, And yeah. it was kind of that eye opener. So since, um, basically since COVID, uh, about 2020, maybe a little bit before COVID, I started to play cornhole. My, my oh, cool. family always plays in the backyard and stuff like that. And I'm terrible at sports. So I never, I was just the sideline, like whatever. Um, yeah. but then I just got so bored. And so by watching everyone else play, my mom used to play and then she's like, okay, well, she's good for a game or two. And then she wants to sit. And I was the only one left. So uh -huh. I was like, okay, I guess I have to come in and I'm terrible. And so, um, I kind of got used to that. And I realized it's like my therapy now. It's like, I get mm -hmm. to throw stuff for an hour yeah. and it doesn't have to matter. And I have like a focus. that's literally nothing to do with work and, um, mm -hmm. yeah. some creative. so, you know, I know we tend as entrepreneurs, we are, uh, workaholics, we can't help ourselves. And so we yeah. have to balance that somehow with what do you do for fun? I'm like, Hmm, work doesn't mm -hmm. count. Even though I love my yeah. job and I know you do too. Uh, mm -hmm. that's kind of the, our nemesis 
this? Is it like if we don't have these other hobbies and things that we like to do, then we just work ourselves to death and we don't want that. Yeah, so, exactly, uh, thank you yeah. for being vulnerable and sharing your your other side of life with, with mm -hmm. us. I appreciate that. I like to people to yeah. know that we are real people and we love mm -hmm. to work and we love to serve our clients and create softwares and trainings, but we also love to live. And that's why we're in business because we, we, we want to do what we really enjoy and make an impact on the world and on ourselves. So thank you, Chelsea, so much. I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing. I don't take that for granted. I appreciate your time and your energy. Y'all go visit sostock.com and get the white paper and get this new tool that's coming out. Join their list because the tool's not out yet. So you have, you can't use it yet, but I'm, I'm going to be the first in line. So thank you, Chelsea. And thank you guys for listening to the Amazon files podcast. We'll see you same time, same place next week week on the Amazon files.